Hi, Misha here, and have a bit of an interesting gun, one I've been looking for for a while and found last summer. A neat part of both Hungarian history and German. I introduce to you the FEG Gewehr 9840. And there aren't a ton of videos out there, although Forgotten Weapons has a really good one. So I thought we would revisit this. Why not? Because it's a neat little gun from World War II. But before we get to it, let's go back to the Steyr here. The men liquor. This was standard in the Austro-Hungarian Empire during World War I and remained the standard into the 1930s even after the two nations split apart. Austria would rework theirs, cutting out most of the long rifles down to Stetsons or carbines, short rifles, and rechambering them from 8 by 50 rimmed, which is a round nose bullet, to 8 by 56 rimmed with a Spitzer bullet. And in Austria, this was the 9530, and it got this S over the chamber to designate the rework. In Hungary, they would basically do the same thing, marking theirs with an H, and it was known as the 9531. But in Hungary, the straight pull in the new 8x56 was only in service for a brief period of time because they were working on an all new rifle. That's because they didn't necessarily love the performance of this gun in World War I. It had a lot of benefits. It was robust, relatively cheap to produce, easy for soldiers to use, but being a straight pull, pull, there you go, pull, the primary extraction wasn't awesome. And it didn't do great in the cold. You could kind of get sticky bolt syndrome. And the bolts for this gun, the Man Liquor 95, had to be fitted to each rifle. So you couldn't just pull a bolt out of one, put it in another, and have it work. You usually had to have a gunsmith, and armor, kind of fit it. This is actually subsequently why a lot of the ones we have in America have really kind of gritty bolts is because they were rebuilt and anyway. So they really wanted to adopt a better gun in Hungary. And they did just that in 1935. They adopted this gun's immediate predecessor as the Puska 35 M. They like putting the model M after the letters and numbers instead of after that, like normal. <laughs> and uh, that was basically a Manlicker Skarnow turning bolt system mated to this drop down single stack magazine from the Steyr. And like it, it fired 8x56. And they made a few other improvements. They went to a new pattern of bayonet. They went to this uh, two-piece stock for both strength and so they could use various wood types, grades of wood. Kind of like an infield, you know, with the wrist here. The new rifle had a longer sight radius than the original at least the carbine, and a few other little changes. They also made it where the safety could be activated with the bolt uncocked, or, well, if I can do it, I'll just do it this way. This gun is very greasy, folks, like that, or cocked, of course. But originally, the 35M had a straight bolt handle. Well, in World War II, FEG received a contract to produce guns for the Nazi Germans. And uh, they, they produced the little 37 pistol, which is kind of neat. We've done a video in the past on it. And uh, they received a contract to produce a version of this rifle for them because they didn't have enough of their 
car 98 k's and they requested a few changes to the 35m design namely turning down the bolt handle german style sling mounts the ability to take the german mauser bayonet of course they also wanted it to take the german 8x57 rimless cartridge 8 millimeter mauser and they reworked the box mag to be like this flush fit double column and that's where our gun today comes in the g9840 why Gewehr 98 no one really knows because it's not really connected to the mauser even though it's a turn bolt so they went down to this style they went to an internal five round mag the floor plate can be opened but it, you need a bullet tip back here they went to the german sling swivel slot in the back in the front they went to a german style bar but it's a little different notice it has a full length upper handguard Here's our German bayonet lug, German style front sight hood. And you might think, well, this is just basically a Mauser that has a caulking piece that looks like a Steyr, but it's not. If you take the bolt out, and I apologize, this thing is Cosmo lined up. Let me take this one out too, just to show you a comparison. Here's our typical Mauser bolt with the fixed head retaining extractor we've recently put up a big video on Paul Mauser and how the 98 came to be but this is quite different for one thing the takedown is back here it's a button you press in instead of pry out it slides up very easily and this is very very different the head is kind of the older style head kind of like the commission rifle or the original Arasaka's so it's a two-piece head versus one and the whole subsequent bolt is just very very different so even though it's a turn bolt design it has some Mauser fittings the internals are very different so they worked on this in 1940 it was accepted in the first year of production really was 1941 out, maybe outside of prototypes and they would produce them through 1944 but the biggest year of production was 1943 I believe and they would build just shy of 138,500 of these for the Germans. They would have the code JHV for FEG. Although interestingly, some believe that part or all of these were actually subcontracted out to a company named Duvunia. And I don't know, there's a lot of back and forth, but it could be. There are two different types of Waffen amps that appear on these. Early will be 56, late will be 173. This is a 1944, so has the later style. And uh, Germ uh, the whole bombing raids, the Allies would pretty much put an end to the German contract by after this time. But Hungary. I like this design, the, the updated magazine. So they took the Gewehr 40 and reworked it kind of to their own standards again, namely going back to the bayonet lug and a few other features of the 35M. And this became kind of the final model in this, the 43M. So that's kind of a combination of a gun with combinations. And they would produce the 43M 
up through the end of the war, literally up to the end of the war in 1945, building over 91,000. So if you count them, it's pretty much sub-variants of each other. They had a pretty good production run. Even more so, they, they considered starting 43M production up again in 1947, but they ran into problems with the Soviets, the Warsaw Pact, much like Czechoslovakia did. And in the end, Hungary went with the Mose and Nagant and eventually the AK. By the way, of course, FEG manufactured the AK under license as the AK-55, and the Danuvia company would be the ones who actually made the machined, the milled receivers for them. So kind of a neat little connection there and gives credence that these might have been subcontracted some or all. But I just, it's an interesting gun. It's another type of turn bolt system. Even though Manlicker is famous for his straight pulls, like this styre over here, he had turn bolt options all the time. He gave straight and turn bolt options. So when they decided to go away from a Manlicker straight pull, they basically just went to a Manlicker turn bolt, which again is kind of analogous to the Ge the Gewehr 88 commission rifle or some of the early Mausers with the moving head. I don't know, it's just kind of an interesting thing. The gun is quite solid, well built. It's about 44 inches long. The barrel's slightly under 24 inches, but she's pretty heavy. She's about eight and three quarters pounds. A lot of it has to do with the metal reinforcement here, the quite thick stock. Notice too, the very Austro-Hungarian shape to the pistol grip, how sharp it is. And uh, the 43M, its base plate here, there was a push button. This you need a bullet tip to activate. Their version you could activate with the fingertip, much like on an Arasaka. Our sights, pretty standard adjustable sights here. Yeah. Just thought this might be interesting, and they're just, they're not very common today. There's even an argument over how these were serialized, but it seems like they started with 1A in the German fashion and worked their way up from there. And unlike certain German factories, they kept on the same, uh, same serial range, not starting over with 1A at the beginning of every year. So, yeah, I know the CNR guns don't get as much uh, attention on here, so we appreciate you tuning into this. If you own a 35 or a 40 or a 43, we'd love to hear about yours. They're just not very common guns. They're interesting, very well made. They had all blued parts. And um, the Hungarians seemed quite fond of them. In fact, some of them came out of storage in the 1950s when there were various protests and uprisings against the, uh, the Soviets. So they kind of stayed around even if production ended with World War II. So with that, if you could, like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please check out the link to our Patreon page. And with that, I'm going to go wash Cosmoline off my hands because this thing really was greasy. This is Misha, and we'll catch you very soon next time.